This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Wacom has rolled out several new products to their Wacom One line. These are their basic pen tablets. There is a medium and a small, and these are at a nice budget price. So today, we're checking them out. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and the only real difference between these two tablets is the size. They have the same features, the same functionality, so I thought, hey, let's group them together into one review. Let's start by talking about what are these and how do they work? Well, these are pen tablets. These are drawing tablets, graphics tablets. Everybody calls them something a little bit different, but basically what it is is a little slate that sits on your desk in front of or beside your computer. It comes with a pen, comes with a cord. You connect it to the cord to your computer. Then with the pen, you draw on the tablet and a line appears on the screen in front of you. And if you're new to this stuff, you might be thinking to yourself, wait, isn't it just easier to draw on a screen so the line appears exactly where your pen tip is? And the answer to that is yes, yes it is. Using a drawing tablet like this actually takes a fair amount of time to get used to. There's a lot of eye-hand coordination you have to build up. I don't usually draw on one of these. So whenever I review one, it usually takes me, you know, half hour, you know, 20 minutes to kind of warm up and get used to it. And that's only after years of practicing and using these things. So if you are new to them, give it some time, give it some patience, and kind of give yourself some time to build into it. So you might be wondering now, why would I get this instead of getting something with a screen? And the answer to that is that this is significantly cheaper than something with the screen. Usually, if you're looking at something that comes with the screen, you're looking at $100, $200 more. Now, like I said at the beginning, these are Wacom's entry-level versions of these products. They also have a product line called the Intuos Pro line. Those start around $250 for the small one and go up from there. And they look very, very similar. So what are the differences between the Pros and what they have here. I think there are really two big ones. First of all, the Pro line has some shortcut buttons along the side that you can kind of program into shortcuts like undo or de increase, decrease your brush size, zoom in and out, that sort of thing. The other difference is the Pro line uses something called Wacom's Pro Pen 2, which is better than the pen that's included here. Not that the pen that's included here is bad. This is actually a really good pen. Uh, this is the same technology that you see in like Samsung tablets. I, I love Samsung tablets because of the pens they have in there. This is the same thing. In fact, you can take a Samsung tablet pen and just draw on this and it works perfectly. And in fact, there's a whole universe of aftermarket pens that you can get that work just fine on this tablet. Now, when I got these tablets and I installed everything and I got it up and running, something that I was pleasantly surprised about that I didn't necessarily catch when I was looking at them on their website is that these are also Bluetooth enabled. So once this thing is charged up using the USB type C cable, you can go completely wireless, which is really, really nice. Battery seems to last a good long while. And if it goes out, you can always is plug it in with the cable and start recharging it and using it while you do. So as of the time that I'm recording this, there's only one way to buy it and that's to go to Wacom's website and actually go through their configuration tool and put together a little kit and get this product. Uh, I think in a few weeks it's going to be available on other sites. Right now it's up for pre-order on B&H Photo, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's on like Best Buy and Amazon and all the electronic sites within a few weeks. There's a reason why I'm bringing this up. Wacom is selling a lot of the pieces parts separately. So I just bought the tablets. They didn't come with cords. They didn't come with this pen. I bought the cords and the pen that I'm using when I bought their screen-based tablet. If you buy this, you are going to need a pen to use with it, and you are going to need a cord. So if you buy it from Wacom, make sure you pick up one of each. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of this. Let's get to the drawing test. But before we do, I want to shout out today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you want to see a cool Squarespace site in action, check out bradsartschool.com. That's my site. It's built in entirely on Squarespace. I can host my portfolio, my online courses, my buyer's guide, where I rank my favorite drawing tech. With the Fluid Engine, Squarespace gives you a next generation website design system. It's never been easier for anyone to unlock incredible creativity. Starting with a best in class website template, you can customize every detail and reimagine with their drag and drop technology on mobile and on desktop. Speaking of those custom templates, it is a great place to start your website design. They've got all these categories that you can surf through and pick out the one that best fits your content and your unique needs. Make your idea, your brand, your business stand out online on any device. With their new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com slash Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. 
All right, so let's talk about drawing with these tablets. Now, like I said at the top, there are two different sizes. There is a small and there is a medium. And what you see on these tablets are a bunch of little dots. And what those dots represent are the drawing area for the tablet. So the dots in the upper left-hand corner are mapped to the upper left-hand corner of your screen, and the dots in the lower right-hand corner are mapped to the lower right-hand corner of your screen. So when you get a smaller tablet, what that means is you're actually getting less space for your drawing. I personally find it, and most people do, more comfortable to draw in a larger space, like a medium-sized tablet is actually a perfect size for me. And there's significantly more drawing space on the medium size here. It's almost twice the size is what you're getting on the small. You can find other manufacturers actually make tablets that are smaller than this and it's almost impossible to draw on those tiny little screens. I thought the small was okay. It was good enough. If you're really looking to just get the lowest end thing you can get from Wacom, it's okay. But if you can swing it, I'd definitely go for that medium. Now, in terms of pen performance, I think the pen performs pretty darn well. First of all, you're gonna get really smooth lines from this. Even if you're drawing slow angled lines, they look really good. This of course is not as good as Wacom's Pro Pen 2 in a couple areas. One is I don't think the initial activation rate here is particularly great. So if you're a super light sketcher, that might be something that you notice is that when you're drawing a line and you're pressing very, very lightly, every so often that line will cut out. There also is less pen pressure in this pen than there is in the Pro Pen, but I didn't really feel like I was missing out in that regard. I thought the pen pressure was solid. It, it worked pretty well. I think these pens have kind of gotten to the point where you don't really notice a huge increase in pen pressure as much. The pen itself is fairly lightweight. It's it's all plastic. Uh, the Pro Pen has like a rubbery grip, which just feels more comfortable to use. It flares out at the top, which makes it easier to hold. This does have two customizable buttons along the side, and they're not super clicky, which at first may sound like a bad thing, but for me, I consider that kind of a good thing. When a button on the side of the pen is too clicky, that means I'm always accidentally like, pressing on it with my thumb or something like that while I'm drawing and I don't want that. So I do want buttons that you really have to know I am pressing it now and it is working. When I go looking for imperfections in this pen, I can definitely find them. For example, like if I'm drawing really, really fast strokes, it seems like the pressure gets lost a little bit there. I get some shoe stringing on my lines and that sort of thing. This was something I was able to clear up just by slowing myself down a little bit. I think some of these nitpicks that I found with the pen, whether it is that initial activation rate or whether it's some of those little shoestring effects that happen at the end of the lines are the type of things that someone coming from the pro pen is definitely going to notice. But if you're brand new to this space, you're probably not going to see it. So what do I think of these devices? Overall, I think they're pretty good. I had some negative things to say about their Wacom One 12 inch drawing tablet. I, I had some problems with that because it was pretty expensive for what it was. And I felt like they were removing features from a tablet they released four years ago that was at the same price point but was kind of in some ways doing more. Here I feel like the price is okay. It's not as cheap as the competitors out there. You can get more bang for your buck from them. However, I think Wacom is doing a couple things really nice with these entry level things that I didn't expect. The main thing being Bluetooth. Usually if you want a wireless tablet, you're probably getting close to $100. And once you factor in the price of the small and the price of the pen and the cord with it, you're getting pretty close to $100, which means this is is kind of price competitive. You're not getting shortcut keys, but usually with a smaller tablet, for me personally, I find that I don't necessarily need those because a small tablet isn't blocking my view of the keyboard. And so I can keep my other hand on the keyboard and just draw off to the side and it works pretty well. Even though you could go to XP Pen or Huion and get something that basically does everything that this does for 10, 20, $30 cheaper, I think the quality is here. I think the Wacom brand name a lot of people are looking for is here. I don't think this is a bad purchase. You can go cheaper, but you can get that Wacom brand name. It's kind of depends on what you value the most. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.